Crowfall is a PvP-focused MMO with action combat that started its life in 2015 on Kickstarter and as of July 6th has finally officially released. Crowfall has 12 different races, 11 classes, and a focus on crafting and fortress sieges. Crowfall describes itself as a throne war simulator where three factions are fighting to control the land and resources. In this game you join a campaign which lasts a certain period of time, eventually one faction will win, the campaign will end, then you join a new one and everything is reset. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Perfect World Revolution is a brand new high fantasy MMORPG for Android and iOS that's available to download now and is a game that's offering a completely unique perspective when it comes to mobile MMOs. This game is the first mobile MMO designed to be fully playable vertically in portrait mode with one hand. This for me is a massive selling point as I personally only play mobile games that are playable in portrait mode due to it being annoying switching between applications in landscape. Perfect World is a long-standing IP in the MMORPG genre and in this game you'll be able to take on dungeons, world bosses, difficult raids and PvP with other players in the game's massive global community. Choose between seven epic classes, the Barbarian, Vulpine, Assassin, Archer, Cleric, Wizard and Blademaster. Customize your character with accessories, hairstyles and different outfits, and traverse the beautiful fantasy world on land, in the air or underwater with various collectible mounts. Click the link in the description below to download Perfect World Revolution for free now and use promo code PWR1HAND to get some epic rewards to help you on your adventures. Download now. Well, I never thought this day would come. After six years of development, Crowfall has finally fully released. Let's see if it's any good. 12 different races. The Centaur, the Elken, the Fey, Gwynesian, Half-Elf, Half-Giant, High-Elf, Human, Minotaur, Nathari, Stoneborn and the Wood Elf. There's 11 different classes to choose from, but the class you can choose depends on your race. So you've got the Champion, the Assassin, Confessor, Cleric, Duelist, Druid, Knight, Frostweaver, Ranger, Myrmidon, and Templar. The last time I played this game, I played a Confessor, so this time I want to be a Frostweaver. Sounds like a bit of a Frost Mage. All right. Wood Elf Frostweaver. Bit of character customization, only three presets for the face, five different hairstyles. Okay, yeah, he, he looks frosty. Yeah, character customization, very limited indeed. Starting out in the game, you need to select a starting world. This is where you level up and basically learn the game. I've got 10 things in my inbox, apparently. I guess this is just stuff I got for free for paying for beta access a while ago. Automatically levels a character to the 25th level. Okay, that's going to save me some time, but I want to play it normally first. Why does it say Crowfall developer build? Thought the game had fully released. And we're in the world. Talk to the rat creature. Spam that next button. This is just going to be a bit of a tutorial. Welcome to Crowfall. Crowfall's best stories are told by its players. Yes, this is like a sandbox MMORPG. There's not really much story or anything. It's all about faction warfare. Level 2 from talking to this thing. A few players standing around. This is probably the most populated I've ever seen Crowfall. Still though, not as populated as I'd expect for a game that's just released. Kill wolves. So now we leave this little starting area and we get ready to slaughter some wildlife. Pressing M, this is the world map. Still fairly difficult to navigate just by glancing at it. Grey shadow wolf. Okay, big damage on the wolf. Spam my left click. Left click's a light attack. I've got a number three ability, which does frontal cone AoE. Got a number one ability. Seems to slow the wolf down. Grind those wolves. Okay, wolves dead. Collect their meat. Back to the town. Talk to the NPC. Level 3. I think the visuals of the game look a bit better from the last time I played it. Before it didn't have shadows. The lighting wasn't very good. The combat doesn't feel too bad on this class. We'll see if I get bored of it later on. Roast meat over the fire. Bit of cooking. Drag the meat here. Assemble. Fucking delicious. The game's definitely feeling a lot more polished than the last time I played it, that's for sure. And it wasn't too long that I played the game, maybe eight months ago. Okay, so next I need to harvest wood. 
equip my axe. Let's chop some wood. Beautiful. This game is quite heavy on the crafting and gathering aspects. So good for those of you that like that kind of thing. Next day wants me to gather stone. Wow, I'm, I'm pretty sure they've sped up the gathering speed from the last time I played the game. I remember it taking a lot longer than before. The animations seem different too. We now have Minecraft speeds of gathering. Okay, that's it. Just get zerged by the entire camp. Let's pop my retaliate. Nice. Take on multiple mobs at once, no problem. Loot, loot, loot. I like that there's now an option to loot all. I think the last time I played this game, looting was very tedious. Oh my god, the aggro range. Teleport away. Bloody rude mob zerging me. Teleport. I cannot. Alt, alt one, heal. Oh, we're healing through the damage. <laughs> What the f ganked by mobs? Cut open that wildlife. There we go. Cut it open. Sorry, vegans. Aim at the weak spot. There we go. Cut it open faster. Right, that was fun. Let's cut open some more animal. So when you're cutting open things and gathering, you can aim at the weak spot to do it faster. Now we're going to craft some armor. Stone, wood, hide, and ethereal dust. Cool. Make some boots. Make a cap. Equip this hat. Equip these boots. Looking good. Level 5. Now I'm looking like an elf. I do enjoy the crafting and gathering aspect of this game. There's just so many little resources around the world to collect. I like to collect things. Oh wait, how's this person got a mount? Oh, you're level 30. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess I'll get a mount later on. The last time I played this game, there was no mounts. You just had this like super fast running mode. Cool that they've added mounts to the game. I'm excited to experience a bit of Crowfall PVP later on. The last time I played this game, there was no players. With it just launching, there's actual players to fight now. Uh, how many of them there are, I'm not too sure. Two different choices of things to cast after I press that ability. First time, almost like a combo system. So this one, E, E, uh, feels a little bit weird, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. So what I'm doing here is sacrificing items and resources that I don't really want to gain XP. If you wanted to, you could just go out farming resources, chopping trees and stuff, and then just exchange that to XP by sacrificing it at an altar. Level 8, burning through these mobs. Pretty good XP. So now if I press O, there it is. Now we have a mount. That's better. Join a guild. Oh, okay. So to join a guild, you bring up the social tab and then you kind of click to apply. Some of the guilds in Crowfall. No girls allowed. Swag. Let's join swag, shall we? And that's it. They don't have a choice. Last time I played this game, I was complaining a lot about the world map because it's not very useful or functional. It doesn't display a lot of good information that would actually help you navigate. Yeah, it hasn't really changed a whole lot. It's still probably one of the most useless world maps I've ever seen in an MMO. Yeah, I don't think I can skip these mobs. Let's try it. Let's skip. Oh god. Yeah, this is exactly what I did in this area the first time I played this game. I tried to skip the mobs here and I got clapped. Ah, not smart. So this is what happens when you die, you turn into a crow and you have to fly to a resurrection shrine. If I press F, does it just teleport me to a statue? Yes, it does. So that's kind of pointless. Oh no, this t returns me to the actual earth temple, not the temple that I was previously at. So by doing that, I need to go through extra load screens. So returning to a shrine in crow form is probably quicker. Can we jump over this gap? Jump. Part of me wishes I took the level 25 boost. Level 12. It doesn't get too long to get to level 30 where you can PvP anyway. A few more hours and I'll be there. Then we can have some actual fun with the game. I just hope this boring intro sequence isn't going to put off new players trying the game. Because you're going to have to go through about 3 or 4 hours of fairly severe boredom to actually have fun with the game. Level 14. You are quite impressive. Thank you, my dude. I know. Level 16. Blazing through the levels. Okay, so you interact with the war table and it tells you about the strength of the stronghold. So if we click walls, it shows that we can strengthen the walls with certain resources. The stronghold is currently tier 1 and it can soon level up to tier 2. So I guess that's similar to Guild Wars 2's World vs World system in a way where each castle has its own level and you just spend resources to level it up. Skinner, Quarryman, Miner, Logger, Gravedigger. I'm more of a logger. I like chopping trees in MMOs. I don't know why. Out of all of the gathering skills, that's the one. 
that tickles me the most. I guess it's just that fantasy of being a lumberjack. <laughs> the long beard living in a log cabin in the woods, chopping down trees. I don't know, it sounds kind of appealing in a way. Promotion class Archmage, that sounds cool. Ranged damage, yes. Promotion class Ice Cooler, healing. Obviously going for the Archmage. Go to the bank. Wait, wait this is the bank. No, that's not the bank. It can't be. That UI is terrible. N no. Really? This is the bank, is it? How do you make such a shit user interface? Holy fuck. How is that the bank? As a UI designer, who looks at this and says, yeah, that's a nice looking bank. Kill players times 10. Okay. I hope there's players for me to kill. I'm probably going to get my ass kicked though, because I'm not level 30. Has my faction captured everything already? Seems like it. I'll just keep grinding some mobs. If I see another player of another faction, then I'll do some PvP. Level 28. Still haven't seen any other players whilst grinding. Uh, let's try going deeper into the zone. It's going to be a bit of a disaster if I'm playing a PvP game with no players to PvP with. Level 29. One more level and we've hit max. Okay, sacrifice all that. A few more objects. A few more. And there it is. We've sacrificed enough items and that's level 30. So now that I've reached level 30, I should be able to go to world select and select a faction versus faction world. Faction versus faction is coming soon apparently. I guess I can't do that. Um, starting worlds then. So let's see if we can find that PvP map, shall we? So to get to this PvP map, the Solarium, there should be a portal at the Earth Temple according to this awkward map. How many times can I, how many times am I gonna complain about the bloody map whilst I play this game? I'm getting sick of my own complaining. Oh my god, another player on a PvP map. Cube wait, no, he's an NPC never mind, it's an NPC. My my bad. Right, let's venture to this lower map and see if there's any outposts I can take. Should be a bit of PvP. It's actually a really big map to be fair. Taking me a fair amount of time to get from one side to the other. I just saw a tree fall down in the distance. There's got to be another player to kill. So this is a fort that's just been captured. As you can see, it seems to be building up some walls. The fact that there's no walls built a fair few hours after it's been captured kind of indicates to me that there's not a whole lot of players that really care. Seeing some players over here. What are they doing? Oh, sorry, NPCs, not players. So over here, we've got an outpost. If I go capture it, some players are probably gonna stop me. Right, and I'm capturing it. So I'm solo capturing this outpost, no problem. Surely a player's gonna come stop me. Let's get ready for action. Any minute now, preemptively AOE the area in case someone comes. What's that? It's an NPC. I'm the only player on this map, aren't I? That's the truth of it. I think I need to just accept it at this point. Additionally, I haven't seen a single other player talk in faction chat, kingdom chat, zone chat, or even general chat. We come back tomorrow at peak time. Let's take a note of when these forts are capturable. The next morning. Oh, this one's fighting now. Okay, let's go to Fort of Kai Sunji. There's actually a battle going on apparently. I'm gonna be so disappointed if I go to this fort and there's no one there. There's no players here and the fort has no walls. But it says event ends. Not event begins. Now, it must be capturable now. Try and solo the fort, shall we? But yeah, these, these mobs are very strong. I cannot. I don't know what I was expecting. So you need like a big group of people to kill these. I wonder if this happens when you die in PvP as well. You need to hold F for like 10 seconds or 15 seconds and then fly to a statue. Does this happen every time you die in PvP as well? Then you need to fly a thousand meters to a resurrect. I mean, if that was to happen in every death in PvP, I wouldn't want to play the game just on that alone. Everything's just so tedious from opening the map to traversing the world to dying and flying to the rock you need to go to to resurrect. There's a reason that even in a bit of an MMO drought, your game's just released and nobody's talking about it and nobody gives a shit. Because you haven't changed the UI. The world is absolute dog shit and nobody cares about the world. I can't think of a single reason to play this over Guild Wars 2. You've essentially taken five or six years to make a worse version of just Guild Wars 2's world vs world mode. 
the combat's mediocre at best. The animations are terrible. I mean, look at this run animation. I can't see a single other player in the goddamn world. I haven't seen a single player in hours of running around the PvP maps. Let's change server, shall we? Let's see if EU server's any better. I just want to see another player. EU1, let's give that a try. Oh, I've got a death mark around me. What does that mean? Has a player cursed me? Oh my... Huh? What the f... Oh my god, another player, but they're on the same faction as me. Okay, let's follow him. Maybe he can lead us to combat. Oh my god! Another player. They've gone invisible. And, and they're gone. Yeah, I'm gonna follow this guy. He knows how to find other players. I wanna see what happens when another player kills me. See if I actually have to go in that bloody bad mode. Here we go. Action is... <laughs> requires dual weapons. Bro, what? One of my weapons got destroyed. Okay, let's see if this person will kill me. Kill me. Come on, then. Go on. So, last time I died, my bloody weapon broke. Uh, I want to see if I turn into a bird. If I turn into a bird and have to fly to a statue every time you die to a player, then, yeah, that's that's a, that's a just a massive deal breaker. And it, it's looking as though that's the case. So, every single player death, hold F, turn to a bird, and fly to a statue. That's fun, is it? So it's like three or four minutes by the time you can actually get back into combat. I'm an MMO PvP player. I play MMOs to do PvP, sieges and stuff like that. I'm literally this game's core audience and I cannot think of a single reason to play this game. There's no way I'm going to be able to show a siege or anything in Crowfall because number one, there's not enough players. Nobody's playing the game. The game's dead. Every server is light and the game's just released. Whoever's in charge of the game decided that now would be the best time to release Crowfall. Right when there's big hype around new Final Fantasy expansion new worlds right around the corner. Ashes of Creation has just had its uh, big Alpha 1 test and that's ongoing. Sword of Legends Online's just released and a lot of people are enjoying that. Couldn't have picked a more hype time in the MMO genre to release this game. So that doesn't help. The UI is one of the worst UIs I've seen in MMORPGs. I've complained about it so many times. The map freezes every single time you open it. And in a PvP game where you're constantly glancing the map, to see what objectives to go to, it feels unplayable. The combat is mediocre at best. The world in this game is the most disconnected, fragmented MMORPG world I have ever seen in the genre. Look at this, this is the world. Visually, if you was to hide the UI and see these graphics and someone was to tell you this game is playable on mobile, you would believe them. 12 different races to the game. That was a priority for launch, was it? 11 different classes. Why wouldn't you just have four races, five classes and really refine the combat? Instead, you've got combat that feels like shit because you've had to design 11 different classes with a non-fleshed out combat system. And then you've had to design armor that fits on 12 completely different races, both male and female options. How was that a priority? Design five classes well, then add classes when the game's successful. Any normal MMO player is gonna log into the game, see this menu, and they're gonna think, what the f- You got faction vs faction worlds coming soon. Oh, but the game's fully released. Why is it coming soon? Guild vs guild. There's no explanation of what these modes are on the UI. Player worlds? What's this? Eternal Kingdom. And it's just a big empty bit of land that you can like put assets on. I can't even be bothered to look at it because it just takes forever to load. The map loading times are longer than the loading times to enter dungeons or change zones in some MMOs. Fuck it, we're not gonna have a pros and cons, we're just gonna have this rant, because I can't think of any pros. This rant can be the cons. On top of all that, for a game that literally cannot function without other players, $40 amidst a pandemic, people don't have a lot of money, and there's all of these better options out right now in the MMO genre. I'm just, just really disappointed. Why, why would you take this approach to design? I don't know. Honestly, that's that's GG from me. I have no interest of ever playing Crowfall again. It's just fundamentally flawed. Playing this has made me want to go play Guild Wars 2 World vs. World just so I can go get that PvP itch that I've been looking for for the past few hours whilst playing this game. GG. 
I'm sorry for the negative video, guys, but sometimes it's negative because there's just nothing really positive to say. Sorry if this video came across as overly negative. Going into this, I was genuinely excited to jump into the game and experience some epic large-scale sieges, but there's just too many fundamental issues with the game that even if there were players to siege with, I'd still be annoyed with other aspects of the game such as the map, death mechanics and boring worlds. As always, let me know your thoughts on Crowfall in the comments below, what are your pros and cons for the game, and social media links on screen. Thanks for watching, I hope you all had a successful day, and I'll see you again really soon.